The intermediate value theorem says that if f is a continuous function on the closed interval a, b, and if n is any number in between f of a and f of b, then f has to achieve that value n somewhere. In other words, if n is a number between f of a and f of b, then there has to be a number c in the interval a, b, such that f of c equals n. In our example, there are three such possible values for c. It could be right here, since f of that number equals n, or it could be here or here. I'll just mark the middle one. The intermediate value theorem can only be applied to continuous functions. If the function is not continuous, then it might jump over n and never achieve that value. One application of the intermediate value theorem is to prove the existence of roots or zeros of equations. Recall that a real root of p of x is a real number c such that p of c is 0. We're going to want to apply the intermediate value theorem with n equal to 0. Our polynomial is defined on the whole real line, not just an interval. But the trick here is to pick an interval a, b so that p of a is negative and p of b is positive, or vice versa, so that the intermediate value theorem will tell us that p has to pass through 0 in between. I'm just going to use trial and error here and calculate a few values of p. So p of 0 is easy to calculate. p of 0 is just 7. p of 1 is going to be 5 minus 3 minus 12 plus 7, which equals negative 3. So in this very lucky example, the first two numbers that we pick will work for our a and b. So we can just let a, b equal 0, 1, because p of 0 is a positive number and p of 1 is a negative number. So actually, the graph should look a little different. The graph looks more like this. But in any case, by the intermediate value theorem, there has to be a number c in between, in this case, 0 and 1, where our polynomial p achieves this intermediate value of 0. And that number c, we don't know what it is, but we know it's somewhere in the interval 0 to 1. That value c gives us a real root for our polynomial. There may be other real roots, but we've proved there exists at least one. The intermediate value theorem has lots of other applications besides finding roots. For example, suppose you have a wall that runs in a circle around a castle, and the height of the wall varies continuously as a function of the angle. Surprisingly, the intermediate value theorem can be used to show there must be somewhere two diametrically opposite places on the wall with exactly the same height. See if you can figure out a way to show this. In this video, we stated the intermediate value theorem, which holds for continuous functions, and talked about a couple of applications.